Chapter 6, verse 2, the book of Acts, chapter 2, oh, chapter 6, verse 2. Then the twelve uh, summons the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God, save the table. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to pray and to the ministry of the word. So, shall we pray? Wamone Thia Rilta Hapapagandia Shishel Yon Wahomena Unun Bahapapatin Dahirien Ureria Rehamarian Babasin Tindaya Tindaya Ukema Tumbuya Heshian and Ed. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for blessing your new deacon today. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we back now to the book of First Timothy chapter three. First Timothy chapter three. After we have heard when the ministry of deacons started, it is started when the church began to grow, and there was church growing. There was some problem. There are some missing other things. So. And they found the apostle couldn't have much time to do the work of the word of God because of complaining, crying. The women, other group people are crying. So the apostle, they would try to put everything in order and they didn't have time to preach the word of God. Then they found out it's a problem. Then they gather together all the disciples say, no, you need to choose people so they can do other ministry. So we need, we as an apostle, we remain in the word, ministry in the word and prayer. So the purpose of the pastors, the servants of the Lord is to minister the word of God then, say, to help people, it needs other people. But the way they choose uh, those seven people, they didn't choose the ordinary people. They choose the very important people. So you, if you are, a, now I'm speaking to the new deacons now, you hear that they choose people, Stephen and others, who are filled with the Holy Spirit. So we found out to be a deacons, you need to be well equipped. So we are now in chapter 3 of First Timothy. We will starting somewhere. We can just because of the time, we'll start verse 8. First uh, Timothy chapter 3. They should start verse 8 because of the time. Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not giving too much wine, not greedy of money, 
for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. Verse 10. But let these also first be tested. Then let them serve as a deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, their wife must be reverent, not slanderous, temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children and their own house well. Verse 13. For those who have served well as a deacons obtained for themselves good sending and great boldness and the faith which is in Christ Jesus. So today, we, this is the deacons. But learn, as usual, all other deacons, they know what we say at the beginning. So, to be a deacons, okay, the word deacons in different, different organizations, some churches, when they say deacons, it's high position. Some places, they say elders. So, in forward in faith, when we say deacons, we have said first day, it does mean that spiritual, you are lower, just a rank, such as a uh, organization set up how we work in forward in faith. So today we are explaining to this we have hundreds of new deacons. I'm speaking to the new deacons who just joined us this time. We as you know some of you you have worked hard to be recognized that you can be a deacon. Last time I must say we saw some people they were doing something with the pastors. They were bringing some chicken <laughs> to the pastors so they can be quickly recognized to be deacon in the church. So, but now today we are telling you oh, to be a deacon and forward in faith. First, before we what is in the Bible. But to be a deacon forward in faith is very, very important. We know that when you, you are become a deacon and some, you are new, you are not strong, you are not been in the church for a long time. Some of you just six months, some some you one year, and you have chosen to be a deacon. So we are telling you, well, one, as you are deacon, Maybe if you, what we are sharing with you today, if it's too hard for you, you can go home and resign. <laughs> Say, I, I don't want to be a deacon. Because we are telling you what's required in forward and faith to be a deacon. So, uh, I thought you wanted to read what I, I read last time, but... Uh, I feel that I just let the Holy Spirit lead me to speak to you. Uh, once you become a deacon in forward in faith, you have to separate uh, from all wrong friends and those who you, even those who are born again, whom you are not too sure about them. You have to be separate with them. Then we said, we, you, are, you are new babies. You are new deacons. You still fight with your, your own sin. But there are a lot of kinds of sin. There is a sin 
that some horns that everybody they can see, ah, 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 it's a sin. So once you become a deacon, quickly cut those horns so you can be a, a sinner in your heart but cannot disturb other people, cannot cause other people to fall down. So everybody, every, everyone who got his own devil, who fight with devil in, in, inside of you, but doesn't disturb other people. But there are some sin that people can see. Those things, now once you become a deacon, quickly cut it, otherwise you are out. We cannot allow you to be a deacon. Because the sin that be seen by people, it cause other people to backslide. But we know that every one of us, you have to have a war. You are inside of you, you know, but it doesn't disturb other people. So once you become a deacon, quickly, no more everything, although you are still fighting, but make sure that all uh, characters that people say, anyway, you will surprise that even people don't go to church. They believe that Jesus was good. Do you know that? Yes. Even people who are not Christian, they believe that Jesus was good. Yes, yes everywhere. That's why when you say, I'm a Christian, they say, ah, oh, no. <laughs> this one is like us. <laughs> why? Because even they don't go to church, they believe that God is good. They believe that Jesus is good. So when you say, I belong to Jesus, and you walk different, they say, mm -mm. this one, no. Because everybody knows that Jesus was good. So once you become a deacon, quickly stop everything. That you stop, get away from those kind of friends. Get out from Stop talking rubbish. No more talking like a heathen. You have to fight with your tongue to speak as a deacon. You have to quickly change your character. Now, where you stay from now onwards, when they hear that you are deacon, they expect some to learn something from you. Now, if they don't see any good things, you are causing people to get away from Jesus. Then you'll be punished by God to cause other people to backslide because of you. You know, my wife and I, sometimes we, we, we don't hide things. You hear me several times when I get everywhere. When I tell people, oh, I fight with the devil, I have a war, I'm a Christian party, I had a big problem, I had a spirit of lust, my flesh too much lust. No, I confess in front of people, but I thank God, but God protected, I never fall in sin, but I have full of flesh, my flesh has caused me lust of the flesh. Wherever I go, I said public, yes, I've suffered, but I thank God who helped me to run away from sleeping with the women. I thank God, I thank God, but I confess, it, I said that it was, it was a terrible, when, it's, when I was still young preachers, it was terrible. I was afraid always, maybe, maybe I will find myself uh, raping somebody. I was always afraid. But now my age, now I'm not afraid. Now I'm better. <laughs> I'm better now. I'm not afraid because my body is really not like that one, like you. <laughs> my body began to be dead, 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 dead. So you don't know how I'm so happy that my body is dead. I never follow. I never touch the breast of woman. I never pass, touch the buttock. I never, <laughs> I never sleep with a woman, only my wife. 
You don't know I'm so happy. That, ah! I'm so happy. Well, those years, I used to be afraid. You know, when you are a, a, a pastor and you are gifted, when you are gifted, it's just like a light in night time. When you put a light in a night time, all insects just to come there. <laughs> so when you are gifted, you attract everything. Beautiful girls, all kinds of things come to you. So I thank God Amen. that God has helped me Amen. that I didn't do it. I didn't. Yes, by my boat was giving me trouble, but God gave me grace. Now, you have to Read African Apostle. If you are new, we are saying to all new deacons, you have to read African Apostle. Then you know my life. You need to read the book of history. I will tell you on Saturday about history, why you should uh, know the history of your church. The, you will tell you how Stephen who knew the history of his church when he was speaking, his face was changed like angels when he was talking about the history of his church. So today, so a sin uh, of thought, the sin of thought cannot disturb other people. Yours, it's your trouble. It's, you suffered yourself. You fight yourself. But other sins, right? Uh, smoking, drinking, uh, all those going to women, going to men, those are sins. We said there's some horn. That we want you to become a member, want to become a deacon of the church, you have to quickly cut those things. Otherwise, you are not qualified to be a deacon in forward in faith. So that's things. We are going to move on. <coughs> you, okay. Want to become a deacon in this church, uh, forward in faith? Uh, you have your behavior, it's changed. Uh, you, you need to thank God, but to be a deacon in this ministry is a very important position even at your work where you are working, you will you are you'll be different. If you do well, you'll find yourself you've been promoted because you be very behave different. You will be in hard work, you will be a hard worker, you are not going to be a lazy, you will be showing that you know God. You work, you will be yes, as far as I know, you'll never be the same. You can be promoted, you can find yourself. Even if you don't have enough good education, because because the way you are doing things, it's, it's going to be different to, to those hidden you are working with you. So, to be deacons, you have to be number one. This other thing, you must be very clean. You must comb your hair properly. <laughs> uh, if, if you want today, today people lazy, people are lazy. That's why they cut all their hairs. Because they, when they wash the face, they wash their heads at the same time. <laughs> because they are lazy to come. So if you want that, you can just, if you have hair, you must come properly. And now, remember, once you become a deacon, if you go by combi, by anything, no more sm smelling. <laughs> you have to have a roller on. All the time. That's not how poor you are. You must put roll on so you are not smelling. A deacon must not smelling, smell in the front, in the, in the buses. You walk, we, we walk, when you go for walking, we see other people passing us, you can, people smelling. They're just, you can say, people. So once you become a deacon in this church, no more smelling, smelling. You have to be very, have, doesn't matter how poor you are, you must have a roll on. 
Don't just wash and put perfume. Perfume cannot control that, but it is roll on. <laughs> that is very, very important. Once you become a deacon of this church, no more s- s- smell. Right. From there, no more smelling. And you have to wash your underwear. All your underwear must be washed. All your underwear must be washed. So not be smelling. Very, very important. Once you become a deacon of this church, all your underwear must wash. And your body must wash. Where you sleep, no more sleep like a swine. You must sleep as a child of God. Your bed must be clean. Your bed must be clean. Where you sleep must show that you are a child of God. Your bed must be clean. Very, very important. And even when you walk, even you go to work, don't leave, just jump your bed with that. You must bed your properly. Don't leave your bed like a salam. Uh, beds or something was there. You must properly your beds when you go. It doesn't matter. You, I used to go to the five o'clock to work, but I have to clean and read the Bible before you go to work. You have to read the Word of God because it is the Word of God that gives you wisdom. It is the Word of God that gives you promotion. Wherever I've been working, after three, three months, I've been promoted. Everywhere I've been working, I've been promoted. Because any company, they need good people. If they know you, that you are a good person, they like you. They, ever I find myself, I'm working with the, the leaders, the owner of the company, because they trust me. So if you are my disciple, this is what to do. Says you must roll clean yourself. Not only that, your teeth must be cleaned. You must clean your teeth, and uh, if possible, when you know that you are going to give testimony uh, to other people, you must have some. What that other thing you put so not your breath is too smelling. Do you have a one, one Mama Guti? Give me one, Lavin. So. Uh, there are some things here today. Uh, mm. <laughs> Open, give me the. Yeah, that Elena, where is it? So, there are some things that when you that we do in America every when you, on Sunday when you go to, on Sunday in America. That we do, so that you're gonna hug people. You're gonna hug people. No smiling, no, your breath must not be, thank you. As, as some people, some people use this one, as some, me, I, do, I used to use, but, ah, like this. So, so that people are not, when you talk, to, most people, when you talk to people, people talk, because, <laughs> because to smell, you are smelling, your breath, your breath is smell. So be careful. If you want to be a blessing and you want to win, to give testimony, to win soul for Christ, you have to be very careful. So not smelling. So we are moving there. Doesn't matter how poor you are, your clothes must be washed. Your clothes must be washed. You must be different from other people. Doesn't matter how poor you are, that one clothes must be cleaned all the time. This is, we are teaching you. This is the book, Bible tells us something. It says, some places, not the Bible, but some, yes, there's a book of Ecclesiastes, it says so, that you must have oil, your head must be clean. So, so to be in deacon this church, that's a very high position because you will work with the elders 
and be assistant to the work of God. So, to be deacons, you have to learn a lot of things. So, if you are married, no more fighting in our marriage. If we hear you, you are beating your wife, you are out. You are no deacon. You are no deacon. If you hear you, you are beating your husband. Yeah, there are some women beating their husband. I know that. There are some women beating their husband. Now, come to this area. I will say that a lot of people are married here. I said, if you see the company in the world, uh, prime minister, president, everywhere, you never see a prime minister choosing a deputy uh, number two to be stronger than him. So there are some men married, the woman powerful, and you're afraid your own wife. <laughs> Why did you marry her? <laughs> you must marry someone who says, today we are going. Say, huh? Wait, no more. tomorrow we are going. She, no, say, me, no. <laughs> then, uh, that is not your wife. It's not your wife. Your wife must be your assistant. So there are some people, I know. Another man in Highfields, he said, I've called of God. God called me to go to the ministry. I say, do your wife know this? He said, I think so. I said, I want to ask your wife when you are there. Then I went to Highfield and said, your husband said, I've called of God. And you agree with him? She said, I no, me no. <laughs> and he cried in the room in front of us. Why did you marry a strong woman if you are a weak man? <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong. Don't you? Because woman is a powerful creature. Woman is a very powerful creature. Not by words, but action. Woman, a powerful creature, can, you can kill yourself because of woman. Once a woman becomes stubborn, <laughs> you suffer. So make sure that you are married the right person, where you come ahead of the family. If not, then she'll be head, and you are under her. So that's very bad things. Very bad, very, very bad things. That I will say to the young, when you marry, make sure the woman are powerful creature. If you don't lead, she will lead. Oh, yes, oh yeah, women, they don't play. They lead. They lead, women, they lead. Whether so, <laughs> never, never play with the woman. If you marry, make sure that you, you got big voice. Say, so, like me, I married a nurse who was leading other nurses in the hospital. <laughs> when I married her, I was like I married another man. <laughs> she didn't know how to speak as a wife or somebody. But brothers, we, we had a war. <laughs> Not fighting like this, but it's a war. And I fought. When you go to the bedroom, they think we are sleeping. No, we are talking. <laughs> I'm kilo, but the big weapon I used to beat my wife, it was love. I used love. The love, true love of God. Ah, when she said bad words, I say good words. When she said the best, I say good words and try change. Today, wonderful. She's the best. Yes. So if you are not strong to, have, to change your wife, brother, we feel sorry for you. <laughs> but because you are not going to do what you like. No. You, you must enjoy your wife. She must be your assistant. We say 
Next week we are going to Mashingo. She must be yes, not to say no. <laughs> so once you become a deacon in this church, make sure that you are leading your family. You are the head of your family. Once you become a deacon in this church, you must be head of your family. Win your wife by love, not by beating her. How many know that if you beat her, you are adding more to be so she can more be tough. She can be bad, more bad. So the only way is to use the love. You can change a woman by love of God. So once you become a deacon in this church, you have to have a head of your family. Head of your family, your children. Now you heard me several times. People, my church prayed for me, for my children. We were so busy, but this church prayed for my children. So, you know, we worked hard. Have six girls, all teenagers, you know. But I have to be strong every night at the evening. Make sure all the windows close. <laughs> and I, I sense, and even to the gate, to whether there's nothing there. When I hear a male voice, oh, what's that? who's that, who's that, who's that? Yeah, I had a big stick to chase the boy from my home. So, my children, we were discussing about sex when they are young. We talk about the sex. Said we always ask, what what age when you want to marry? Which age? Then we talk. This age is good. This age is not good. So, all my children say, you sign here that you are going to marry being a virgin. Sign here. Oh, yes. But most of them, maybe only one, most of them, they made being virgin. But it was not easy. I have to be a real father. Very strong father. Now, today, I qualify because all my children, they are all in the ministry. They are working with me in the ministry. But it was not easy. So I'm saying to the deacon, when you have a children, don't let those children be now Sunday school teachers in charge. Uh, Sunday school. No, no, it's your own children. You must have a time of your own children. So we are talking about a deacon in forward in faith. Few real. Now, there are some things, some sin that troubles you, you can share to the pastors, say, I'm troubling, this problem is trouble. I need help in this area. I need help in this, this area. I need help. So, we are moving on. To be a deacon in this church is very, very important. You will, it's a, it's a part of education itself. You'll never be the same if you are learning studying how to be a good uh, deacon. So we are there. It is in scripture. So coming back to the chapter 6 of uh, Acts, what do we do? To be a deacon, that means, I'm just jumping there, to be a deacon, that to, to save the church, to save the church. You have to come early in the church to make things that everything is in order in the church. That's the work of deacons, to have everything in order. So you will assist and work with your elders as a team. You work as a team, those deacons, elders, and pastors. As a team, most, most places, if you have an office, before you go inside in, 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 uh, in a sanctuary, you have to meet outside the office there and discuss with your uh, 
either there's a who's in charge, uh, who's a leader uh, in that room. Mama Guti told me, did you, we saw another man who was serving with a, he's not a singer, with a long hair. So the Bible says it is shameful for men to have long hair. That's the Bible. A long hair like a woman. So we, according to the Bible, the book of Corinthians, tells you that to, to have a long hair is a shameful thing for the men. So maybe you are a new deacon. We don't blame you. We'll explain you. We'll show you that it's not good for you. So long hair is good for women, not for men. So maybe because you are a new deacon, you didn't know. We don't blame you that. You didn't know that is not good things according to the Bible. So once you become a deacon, you have to shave your beard properly. So that's the rules of the, you work together with the uh, elders as a team. You, as I said, the other thing, it's like here, you see this present worship. This group you see here, they were in camping. They were not at home. They were been praying for, um, I don't know how many weeks. I mean, they were, oh, this group you see here, sing here. They were praying and fasting to prepare so that they work together with the preacher. They cause people to be ready. They cause people to come down, uh, God to come down. They cause people to receive God. So they are in between people and God and the preacher. So these people you see here, they've been fasting and praying for this deeper life to prepare themselves. That's why when they sing, you get blessing. You sing, you get blessing. They are not artificial. I've been in America, a lot of the, it's a, most of the, Artificial. It's the, the performance in the front. They perform. After that, nothing. But this one, they've been fasting and praying for them, for us to be filled with presence. When they sing, if we open our eyes, our spirits, we get blessing, even before the preachers. So, to be a deacon, I said, you serve under your elder. But they are repeating, you are the one who comes to the church. Okay, come to the area of in the church. You, some churches, you should know your ministry. If you are area musician or you are electrician, that's your, you work as a deacon, but prepare everything in electrician or music and, this, and everywhere. So we are so, you've been hearing the wonderful teaching here for wisdom, and uh, you have heard about administration, you have heard about planning. So today, we are so happy that we have a lot of people who teach us about planning. So, I believe now we are encouraging, as we have spoke to the elders, that we are, oh, so you don't know, what I'm doing all these years, I'm training you to take over the church. That's what I'm doing. You know, as learn when I'm still alive. I'm busy. I spent some more than 10 years to train the National uh, Council. So this church here is led by National Council. So that's why I can go out for six months, but the church is still moving. But I spent more than 10 years to train National Council to be one. They gather here. 
So today, I'm not control, I'm not really, but it's in uh, under the National Council. So I'm busy training the elders and deacons to take over the church, but you must be my disciple. Because if you don't do what I'm doing, when, you, when I've gone, people are not going to listen to you. But if you learn from me, what I'm doing, when I've gone, the people will learn, they say, yes, our father like this, yes, yes. yes. So that's what I'm doing, you don't know this, I've been, the elders, the reason we are teaching the elders to be in charge of the church, because the church is grown, we, have, we cannot have a pastor everywhere. So we need elders to be, the pastor will come to feed you, and he goes like in Harare. Most of pastors, they are gone, they are out for three months. Who's running the church now? If we didn't train these elders, the church will, but now you're surprised. If, when this pastor comes back, they find the church up because we have been training the elders to be in charge of the church so that pastor will come and feed the word of God. Then they go other place for three months. They'll go other three months and come back again. So we are training the elders and deacons to be a good team to look after the church of God so that all the new believers, they will learn good things from you. Yes, that we have been, I've been, as I said, more than 10 years to train the National Council of the Age of Foreign Faith to, la to run. So when I'm out, I'm not afraid because they know how to do it. So we are busy training elders and deacons to be a good team so that the work of God will grow peacefully. So, so we are moving still there. To be a deacon in this church, uh, you are not allowed that short temper, get angry quickly, I see you. Get angry quickly, stop it. We are not allowed to get angry quickly. We are teaching you to have a long suffering, patience. Even your pastor said hard words, even your elder says them, but you must submit. You have to submit. Sometime, like me, I grew with a uh, very, how could you say, very bad pastor. His character was bad, but he's my pastor. Sometimes he borrowed money from me, never gave me back my money. <laughs> my pastor. So what are you going to do with that kind of pastor? If you fight with him, you lose the blessing. Sometimes we, we, some of things we learn from David with the, with the soul. So we learn something. So sometimes you have a, a very tough pastor or tough overseer or some you you work with the tough elders and you are a deacon you are not allowed to we are not allowed to shout you are elder you are not allowed to fight with your elder you have to learn long suffering you have to learn long suffering now if you expect to be a man of God, woman of God. Some scriptures told us about in the book of Old Testament, told us about Moses who was a powerful man, but he was so humble man. So he became a strong leader. So if you, I am talking about your short temper, I saw you, your short temper, get angry quickly. If you read that spirit, you can be backslidden. You, 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 that spirit, you, you think church is a bad church. Because of one elder, you can leave the church because of one elder. You must get out from the boastings. You must submit. You must learn 
to submit, learn. Yes. It's, it's, any, it's like a marriage. Any marriage, you see people all living together nicely. There's no marriage with us. They say we never know whenever some tears come down. Any marriages, there are some tears. And later on, no more tears. But it's, it's there. So even in the church, there are some tears when you work with it. To you, that person is bad, but God says it's good. That's the problem with church. You say this person is bad, God says it's good. You say this elder is bad, God says it's good. Some, have you ever seen someone whom you trust and God begin to use him mightily to confuse you? <laughs> you, you thought it to you is bad, but God is using him. What are you going to do now? <laughs> so the best way is to surrender, leave everything in the hands of God. Yes. Say, I'm not God. I'm not in charge of these people. I'm not in charge of the pastors. I'm not in charge of elders. I'm not in charge of deacons. I'm just a member of the church. Me, I don't. I, I came here. I was not looking for the good elder when I came to church. I didn't come here to look a good pastor. I came here because of Jesus. I came here because I love Jesus. So never put your mind to the people because people can uh, cause you, you can be angry. People can dis disappoint you. Never, never, never put your trust to men. Men can, men can promise, but they fail to fulfill. That's why do not put your mind, your heart to Jesus. No, I see, I see a lot of things in this area where, where I'm talking to you. A lot of things in those areas. So you find yourself, you are the deacons, but why do you want everybody to pay? Do you say, yeah, 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 all the time? You cannot, don't expect everybody to just, yeah, 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 yeah. We invite you to receive Jesus, not that elder. If that builder begs to lead in, don't follow him. If that person gets well, don't follow him. So I see a lot of uh, babies in my spirit. I see a lot of baby deacons here. Oh, what are we going to do? My spirit is so, I see a lot of baby deacons. Baby deacons. So what are we going to do? So... I'm here today uh, to be a... We'll finish this on Saturday and we will surprise how... First of all, uh, to be a deacon, first you must be born again. And the scripture here, which, I, which we're going to read, read again in the book of Timothy, it says... Before they become deacons, they must be tested. So, some of you, you never have a good testing because the elders was quickly never announced the day they chose you to be a deacon. Other people, they didn't hear. But according to the rule, it was supposed to be announced and that everybody uh, accepted that, yes, he can be a deacon. But some of you, you become a deacon, but there was no proper announcement. And you're like a sneaky in. <laughs> you're sneaking in as a, a deacon. There was no proper testing. The book tells us to go through testing. They have to ask assembly there. there and everybody, say, yes, they say, yes, it can be accepted. So, some of you, you never go through testing, but we are expecting. So, you'll see, oh, you'll surprise that some people who are here who never get opportunity of being baptized because of the time. Have you, if you are a leader of the, to the pastors, did you ever, yes, there are some overseers, 
Did you ever win people, train people, uh, to give, their, give their life, and then you prepare to baptize 10 people, sometimes you find only five. So what, what's happened? Some people, they miss that day. Not because they don't like, but they miss that day. They were at work or somewhere, they went for funeral. That's why you're gonna, what you, you'll see some of them here that they have missed something. Some they have missed a body. They missed the Holy Spirit because they were not there. Some they were not ready. So all this t t today and tomorrow and Saturday, you're going to see what as we move on to make sure that you are not allowed to be, you must be born again. You must be born by again. How do you? Yes, if you go in America and South Africa, you see many, many people who say, I'm born again. Because when big evangelists like, like our friend Ranhan Bongi was preaching with thousands of people, then how many people want to receive Jesus? You see thousands of people receive Jesus, but they receive it in their head. Never went down. So you see, go to America, go to, you don't find who already say I've never been born again. Because the preacher was preaching and oh, they raised their hands and they received Jesus in the head. <laughs> Nothing happened in their spirit. So true born again is you, your inner man must hear the word of God. The word of God must prick to you. The word of God must cause you to cry. The word of God must prick to your heart. So when you open your heart to receive Jesus, you re open your, when you begin to see your sin, say, I'm bad. that's why to repent, you see people come down here with the tears. That's true repentance. You have seen it that you are a sinner. No one told you that you are a sinner, but you yourself, you know you want to be saved. Then when you hear the word of God and you receive Jesus Christ, you need, it is, oh, the scripture says, when you hear the word of God and you don't understand, the devil will come take out the seed. So that's why you hear people, they've heard it, but they, they didn't understand. And the devil picked the seed. So you have remains the head, I receive Jesus, but no seed to your spirit. Uh, you are hearing me? No seed to your spirit. You got it here, but the seed, because you didn't understand it, the devil have taken the seed, and then you got in here in the herd. But no, nothing went to your spirit. To be born again means when it says you must be born again. Why? Because you've been born by your father and mother. Now, to be born again, that's to be born by God. So to be born by God, how do you be born by God? So it's just verse, verse 5, uh, it says there, very clear. You must be born by water and the spirit. Exactly. When you were born in the flesh, it was two people came together. Your mother and your father came together. And you were born just like them. You were born just like them. So it was two people came together. For you to be born spiritual is two things again. It is the word of God and the Holy Spirit work together to enter in your spirit to make you a child of God. Not in the head. It's in, in your spirit. It's this, we are not a religion people just to know things. It must be happen in your spirit. So that's a thing to be different. To born again is Holy Spirit and the word of God. It says you must born by water but not the water and the river. 
uh, we clarify it in the book of Ephesians, uh, Ephesians. Uh, we clarify it in the book of Peter, that this word born by water is not the water of the river. Yes, the water of the river has its job. So that's why when I baptize people first, when you're born again, and your spirit will be born again, then to baptize in water is just like a wedding. Wedding. You see, when you marry people, uh, marry people in the church, sometimes you see the men come this way, and the girl comes with their parents there. They pretend that they never met before. <laughs> and uh, when they come, I, ma- I never marry people who said the ring never fit. That uh, ring to see if it fit, that shows you that they've been together in the shop testing all the... <laughs> but uh, on day of marriage, she must come with her father there, and then you come there. So... Exactly with the baptism of the water. When we baptize people in the water, it's not private. We want them people to sing, I am a new creation. So people that baptize in water, baptize in water is to fulfill righteousness. Jesus says so. He said to baptize in water uh, is not mean that you are a sinner, but to fulfill the righteousness. And again, to baptize in water is to say to the world, bye-bye, I'm following Jesus. But if we are talking about born by God, you only born by God, by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God coming to your spirit, not to your head. Coming to your spirit, not in your head. When the Word of God enters in your spirit, and then you know, you, you know yourself, say, I'm a different, I'm not the same. It's not something uh, like uh, uh, the story in Malawi. Someone said in Malawi, this mango, uh, this mango, this tree never bear a mango. Then a young man went took the mango to another tree and he came and tied up this, this tied up this mango tree. It another, took another mango, it's tied up. Then he said, Baba, look, this, this, this tree now got the mango. <laughs> the father said, no, we know this tree never gave a mango. They said, no, that's to come, see the mango there. They said, okay, if it's the real mango, we wait when they're going to ripen up. And the sun came out, <laughs> and all the things <laughs> fall down. <laughs> because the mango was not d- drinking from the mango. <laughs> it was tied, someone tied there. There are some kind of bone like that. People are born again, just tied up on the top. <laughs> it look like so, but you just wait when sun comes, because that mango is not drinking <laughs> from the tree. If someone put it there, <laughs> you cannot. So there are another kind of people baptized, have been baptized. So maybe tomorrow you'll see we'll baptize people. you say, to be baptized again is not a sin. It's not a sin. We baptized people who said, the day I baptized, it was, I was not real, I didn't know what I'm doing. I was just pleasing people. I was just do following people, but it was not real me. Doesn't mean. Yeah, well, you see it in the book of Acts, chapter 19, you see it. When Paul saw those 12 men, who they explained, them, how did you baptize? They said, we were just rep- the baptism or repentance. He said, no, no. You need to be rebaptized. They never said, ah, we that we always test people like that. Says, yes, you think, but we want you to to you to be rebaptized. It's not a sin. They the 12 men, they believe what Paul was saying, and they were rebaptized, and what happened? They received the Holy Spirit and the power and begin to prophesy. So 
very, very important. When we talk about it again, we don't talk about to, to memorize it, to know it, but it must be happening in your spirit. Chapter 1 of the book of John, we all stick on verse 13. Verse 13, it says, must be born by God, not by church. You must be born by God. How is it born by God? It is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God comes together to your spirit and to change your spirit. Your spirit become a child of God, not your head. So you hear me, I'm talking, putting together a lot of things because uh, I was, we didn't start on Tuesday. So that's why I'm talking there. So you make sure. Now I see a lot of people here. The man who led you to receive Jesus Christ, he, did not, he didn't do it well because he was himself, he didn't understand properly. Yes, that's, that's why you, have, you are struggling. The word doesn't go in your spirit. You are surprised why. The word doesn't go to your spirit. When we preach here, it just goes in the head. Something is like there's some uh, umbrella that hit its hand and stop the word of God to go to your spirit. So that's why you don't, uh, you, you don't grow, you don't you, you don't say, say ex so excited by the things of God. Yeah. You don't hear again God speaking to your spirit. When you are born again, you hear God speak to your spirit. God will talk to you. Even sometimes, uh, what is the day, or good day, or bad day, uh, you, you ask God will speak to your spirit. God will speak to your spirit. God will correct you, rebuke you in your spirit. When you say wrong words and you feel guilty, you repent. When you try to do something wrong, you feel guilty, you repent. Because the Holy Spirit convicts you. But if you are just uh, artificial, you don't feel anything. You can sleep with a woman and tomorrow preach. You can sleep with the men tomorrow. We don't feel anything. But if you are born again, you tremble. You cry. If you are still there, say amen. amen. If you are still there, say hallelujah. hallelujah. We are talking about the deacons. Deacons, true deacons. So, you see, I, did I finish that? I saw it, that you are born again is, is too artificial. The other thing I see, since you receive born again, you never stick on in the Bible. You want someone to read you the Bible. That's a problem. If you wait for someone to read the Bible for you, it's just like a baby born, and the baby don't drink the milk. The baby will die. So you have to, you are, there's a scripture that says so. In the book of Peter 2, verse 2, says so, that you must drink milk. So once you're born again, you must drink milk, the word of God. Yes, some, some people, they, they think uh, they don't have time. But you can have time. You can arrange your own time. Then when you are grown up, when you, you, don't, you don't need special time for you to pray. You can pray when you're driving. You can pray when you're doing anything. You're, you're praying. You're praying. You're praying. You're praying. So, but when still, although you pray when you're traveling, even the same thing. When I was young in the Lord, for God to speak to me, I have to be find a place to be quiet and spend the time for God to speak to me. But today, because my life is in his hands, he speaks to me anytime. I don't need a special time for me to, because I belong to him. All my life is in his hands. I don't have anything 
as, as myself. I'm in his, that's why he talked to me all the time. So this, when you are growing, but as, let's say, finish the area, what I saw, that you have received Jesus, and you are not reading the word of God. That means a baby not drink the milk, the baby will die. When your spirit, spiritual dies, you find the flesh control. That's why you see me, I don't want to get angry, afraid to lose my anointing. I don't want to talk, speak rubbish. I don't want to feel guilt because I, it's very expensive, very expensive to keep anointing in you. To keep the blessing, it's very expensive. It means to not allow rubbish to think, I don't want to think bad things. I don't want to hate people. I don't want to say, that one is bad. Ah, that thing about me, another people, is bad person, that person. I don't want to think of that. Because I don't want to lose what is in me. Because in my inside, I'm, I'm very rich. When you hear me say, I'm happiest in the world, when I say, I'm a blessed man, people think that I'm talking about the money. Money is not a blessing all the time. Money can give you big trouble. All the, what you hear all the trouble in the world is because of the money. When you hear I'm a blessed man, it is my soul being blessed. I'm the happiest man in the world. But it is because I surrendered my life to him. I live for him. So that's why I'm so happy. But to do that, you have to deny things. You have to deny some things to enjoy. Inside of me, I'm very rich inside of me. But to, to, do, to keep that riches, I have to refuse other things to come there. I have to, so, because something I'm rich in spiritual, then I can speak things to happen. I can speak I can call money to come. I can call blessing. So every day, when we are coming, we are in our bedroom, we bless people all over the world. They, they phone. We pray. We pray. People who, know, who need children, people who need this, people, we pray. And God bless it. We receive report. So you pray for me that day. You pray for me that. But I cannot do it when I'm empty. I have to have that in my spirit, that's anointing to stay in me. So to keep that anointing is that to, you know, you, when you are young and the Lord, you don't know. So how to choose, say, ah, uh, Madame Buri has done very big, bad thing to me. Then I say, I need to go and shout him. Then I say, I've decided not to talk to him. I decide to forgive him. So, because when you go and ask, you are adding more problem. We were in South Africa. This is some elders. They said, Brother so so, uh, we want to talk to him. He done this wrong. He done this wrong. Then I said, when, when you see him, if he said, Yes, I've done that, you want to put him in prison? No. If he said, yes, do you want to fight with him? It's no. Oh, why? If you know that you, you don't want to put him in prison, you don't want to him to pay fine, why are you going to ask it? Just forgive him. That's best. Just forgive him. Again, when you remember, when you go there, he can tell you another liar to make you angry. I know what I'm talking about. You say, I'm going to ask him. You ask him, and he tell you another lie. The best way is to forgive and forget. Then you live joy. You live life. You'll be a happy man. You'll be a happy woman when you do that. But when, why do you keep a lot of, why do you see a lot of sin in the church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you see a lot of bad people in the church? Why, why, why do you spend your time 
seeing people bad people. But once you hear a child of God, you will see as that's how I pray myself. Or maybe you've heard the story. Myself, I pray to see people that say, oh, angel, only me I'm bad. So I fight with my sin. But some people, they see, they feel they are holy, but bad, people are bad. You suffer that kind of life. That kind of life you suffer. Because you say you are good. Oh, people are bad. They are good. Like some other people, you see, they are bad. The pastor are bad. This one bad. But uh, it's not so. So let's go back again. <clears throat> we are not finished. We are not going to finish this today. Oh, verse 8. Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not giving too much wine, not greed in money, holding, nine, holding the mystery of faith with a pure conscience. So that it means when you become a deacon in, in the church, you keep, you are, when you hear people talking about blaming your church, you don't support them. When people try to say your pastor is bad, Lord, you don't support him. When people try to tell you the bad thing in our church, here it says, keep faith in, con- in good heart, holding the mystery of faith with a pure conscience. Holding with mystery. So people must not know the other people you live there, they must not know the secret of your church. They must not know someone who's been disciplined in the church. You must, they must not know some other thing that happened in the church. Church is a family, brother. Something can happen, but we correct it. Just like any family. Something happened, and we correct it. We forgive each other. Now, you are not allowed to tell your brother who are not a member of our faith. What happened in this church? You are not allowed. Just like you, with your wife, you don't want everybody to hear what's going on in a blanket. <laughs> Lot of things, some funny thing happened in a blanket with your wife, with your husband. But why you keep quiet? Why, why, why you want to tell the other people about the church? You are not allowed to tell other church about the secret of your church. Amen. You only tell people who are repenting, then you tell them. But you are not allowed when they to tell all what happened in the church. Just like a ma- church is like a marriage happening in your family, happening when you're quarreling, you are angry, and this, and you're fighting about this and this, but you don't want other family to hear. So exactly the things of God that you must keep it in your church. Don't share with a brother who attend other church unless you are want to win him. Unless you are ready to win him, you can tell him the any church. Someone say, "I'm gonna uh, this uh, forward in faith is bad. I'm gonna form my my church a good one." Now you form your good one, and uh, bad people join that church, <laughs> and they ruin that church. So there are no, there's no way we can have a good church, but it's the people who ru- bad people who ruin the church. So we are not allow you to tell other churches what happened in your church only when they ask you because they want to join your church. They were in verse 9. Keep faith mystery that people not understand, but you understand because you are belong to forward in faith. Keep mystery of faith. Oh. 
verse 10. But let this also first be tested, then let them serve a deacon. We said, we saw already some of you, you never went through proper channel to be here. It was elder, it was that a few people who just pick you, say, you are elder, you are deacon. So we are correcting this today. <clears throat> says, let the deacon be uh, the husband of one wife. <laughs> now, we, you, you, want, you have a wife, but you still have a boyfriend, some, a girlfriend somewhere. Now, you are not allowed to do that. Once you become a deacon for faith, no more girlfriend somewhere. Trust one wife. I want you to say, mm hmm. <laughs> no more boyfriend there. No more boyfriend there. No more girlfriend there. There are some people, you know for sure that this, I see this woman, and I had another woman down there who knew that the husband was still having some girlfriend somewhere, and she kept quiet. Why not share with us, say, help my husband, help my husband. So we are, we are builder of the family. If you tell us the secret of your husband, we are not going to tell people. We are going to help you. We are going to help your husband. That's what we do. The, the wise woman, they always share with the pastor. Can you pray for my husband? Can you do this? So, keep secret of the church. But now, you, are, you live that, that life, and you are not enjoying it. Because you are not, you are, there is no honesty in your marriage. We want you to enjoy marriage. We want you to be happy, people. Those like wives, the wife must be reverent, not slanderous, temperate, faithful all in all things. Faithful in all things. So, verse 13, for those who have served well as a deacon obtained her position. I repeat that. Once you become, a, you follow what we are teaching you. As I'm teaching you today, it's, you have seen that in the church, since you came here in the beginning, the education comes to you. You have heard about uh, planning. You have, heard, you have heard about organizing, which you didn't know. So, how many people who, if you don't listen about planning and organizing, you always trouble with your own life. How many people get go, go to church very late because not organize your clothes? <laughs> yeah. You get... Because organization, organize, it makes things easy. I repeat, when you organize your things, life becomes so easy. But if you don't organize your life, now the life is going to trouble you. So organization, listen, we are all here, you are, you are hearing the teaching of organizing, planning. You must plan, you must plan, you must plan, you must plan, you must plan. So if you don't, there were some speakers whom we didn't invite from America. Because when you invite them, when they go to the bathroom, they spend an hour in the bathroom. <laughs> Yet we want to start a meeting at 8.30. They never come here at 8.30 here. They are, <laughs> they are busy. We told them, if you ask my I'm a father in America, they know that. You saw this, Baloo here, when he said, I'm not going to do that. He said, we said, 8.30 must be here. We couldn't get them to speak 
because they are very slow. <laughs> very slow <laughs> to go to the bathroom and they're, they're dressing, they spend hours oh, dressing. <laughs> most of them, most of my friends in America, they depend on the secretary. Secretary does everything for him. <laughs> So we, I told them, if ask them, you ask him, you know that man who we sent is going to preach in Kwekwe, he'll come tomorrow, I said to him, tell him why he has changed his life. He said, if you want to fit forward in faith, you must keep the time. And if we say you speak 30 minutes, it must be 30 minutes. In America, when you give him time to preach, he doesn't want to get up from pulpit. He wants to sit there. <laughs> so I've been preaching in America more than... 40 years. I know America more than people who live there. That's why I'm talking like American. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. So, uh, we want to become a deacon, you must plan your things, your family, your, your clothes, your dressing, <laughs> the women, your dressing table. <laughs> Yo, you are on dressing table so mixed up. <laughs> Time is gone. We want to go to church, man. <laughs> Organize your dressing table. Make sure which thing you are using. But women in the dressing, I've, I've been everywhere. They like it in their drinks, even their bottles, empty bottles, they put it there. Have you, have you seen that? Huh? <laughs> they, they just want to de decorate their dressing with empty tin, empty, empty bottle. <laughs> but they want you find it. That's women. So, but yes. Put your empty bottle, but be, make sure which you are using. <laughs> so you cannot delay to go to church. <laughs> so, planning is very, very important. You must plan your things. And if you are uh, working, if you expect you are working in the company, you expect to be promoted. You expect to be promoted you have to raise your standard. I've been there. I've been promoted. Oh, yes. I was in city. I've been working in the city council. I've been in local government. I've been there. Uh, when I'm working, just three months I've been promoted. So, and they say, ah, he's not a Christian. He's got some charms, man. How can he be promoted like this? Because I'm a hard worker. I work hard. Any company I join, I work hard and I become a leader. So, you are deacon today, where your company, must, they must see new men. You are working there, you are stealing the time, you are not keeping the time, you are used to come very late to the company, from now onward, you have to come right time. You have to be there right time, because you are born again, you are a child of God. We are in this ministry. We don't just train you to die to go to heaven. No. We train you to live life here. To enjoy life here. We are not that old preaching, brother. Old preaching, they say, we'll be happy when we go to heaven. But Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven has arrived on earth. Read your Bible. The Bible says, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of God has arrived on earth. So we are don't talk like this old people to everybody to go to heaven, heaven, every day, heaven, heaven, heaven. We will go there when we are finished here. God wants you to live good life here. Amen. That's all. When you talk about the blessing, we want God to bless you so you can worship God with a clean heart. 
So you can worship. God never created you to, to go every morning cry. <laughs> every morning cry. God called you to come near down to say, I come to thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Father God. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you. I bless my children. I bless my husband. I bless my boss. You speak as a blessing. But if you have a lot of problem, a lot of credit, you borrow money there, borrow money like in America. In America, most of my friends, they are slaves of credit card. All my friends, there are no one who got money in the bank. Oh, they get credit card. And you know, in America, when you are very faithful, when you pay everything you credit, they give you another card. That's America. If you do faithful, you pay well, they give you another card. So you can remain slave. But in this ministry, we want everybody to be free. Don't buy things by credit. Save money and buy things. Save money and buy things. Why do you want to copy other people? Why you live uh, uh, artificial life? We don't live artificial life, brother. We do the right thing. If I don't have money, I don't buy. When God gives me money, I buy. Uh, uh, people, uh, if we don't have a nice furniture, people, which people? Everybody with their own problem. I'll have my furniture when God gives me furniture. But uh, not doing for the people. Which people? Uh, people, everybody with their own problem. So, before we go out for uh, a few minutes to come back, I'm here today to talk to the deacons. To be deacons, you must life, your life must be shown that you are born again. Your life must show that you are, your, your behavior, the neighbor who knows you, they must be you are different. This is what we are teaching that we are supposed to teach. If you ch check your notebook, all other people will always teach that the first day on, on Tuesday. But because I didn't speak. But today, I'm, as I'm speaking, I'm speaking to all our deacons all over the world. Because they are seeing me. In London, they are seeing me. In everywhere in Australia, they are hearing me what I'm speaking. I'm speaking to you there. Don't be just a deacon by mouth. You must do the work. How is it you be since you've been deacon? You come still come to church very late. And you say, Deacon, I'm speaking to you there, overseas there. You got the name, Deacon, but you don't come right to time the church. Why not to say, I'm not qualified to be a deacon? Why do you accept that position? To be a deacon, that means you have to come early in the church to organize things in the church. And speak to all our elders, our deacons all over the world today. And says, I said, yes, they have appointed you to be a deacon because you are showing you are very clever, you're very, but you know yourself you are not yet born again. Work out. Work at that life. You must be born again. Don't be shy to go to your pastor and be counseled. Go. They will help you. So you can, in this ministry, we don't do to, just to, for funny to please people, to be seen by people. This church here, you see, I'm just a servant in this church. It's not my church. I'm not, this is not my church. I serve God in this church. I fear him because he talks. He correct me. He rebuke me. He get angry with me because just as he was talking with Moses, exactly the same, he talks. He tells me what, he want, what I must speak to his children. And don't just speak what I like because it's not my church. I'm a servant of his church. I don't do this to be seen by people, but to, no, no, brother, I fear him. I fear him. So I want you, I don't, I know you've been that church and you know for sure that pastor will have some girlfriend somewhere. And you know that your pastor has drink some alcohol. You, yes, you know your pastor drinks some alcohol hiding there. And you can, but not this church. Not this church. No, you must get out from that uh, strong uh, alcohol. Not this church. 
No, we said if you try to be you be in this, in this you are you are in wrong place, place, my friend. We fear God. We don't play here. We don't play here. We don't just do to be seen by people. We discipline people. If some someone fall in sin, we discipline people. We don't allow someone fall in sin and stand up and prove it. We correct. We rebuke. We fear, according to the Bible. So there are some churches. Some people, anybody can start his church to get money. Yeah, they say can his church to get money from people. We are all say lazy people. Why not get a job and work? <laughs> get job and work. You, we are here. You must be have a call of God. Amen. When you have a call of God, you don't do what you want to do. Amen. You do what He likes, Amen. and His His way is not your ways. Amen. It's not your ways. Sometimes good. Sometimes. Tears. That's the work of God. Tears. Joy. Tears. Joys all the time. So, I'm saying, you've been with that kind of church, and you come here, you want to have that spirit. No. We are asking you, brother and sister, to fight that kind of thing. You know for sure that woman, she also still have some uh, wishes, and at, at night time she got uh, you know, why not? Why you keep quiet? We have a deliverance center here. Bring her. She can live. Yes, day and night, go to Timbuya and Dogas there. When you know so she still have that spirit in night time. And you know, and she, how can you allow her to preach when they still have that spirit in night time? So, why not bring her so she can be delivered? Yes. We don't blame anybody. We, we know that it's not to someone to be wish or to be anything to be. Uh, uh, it's not that the person like it. So that's why we are saying to the elders and deacon, the pastors, when people come to our church, don't rebuke them. Don't talk about uh, you are a sinner. You are a sinner. Yeah, that's why I come to church because I'm a sinner. Yeah. Now, if you blame me, you want, where, where do you want me to go? I've come to church because I'm a sinner. So the preacher must bring good news. Oh, hear me. A preacher must bring good news to the sinners. Not to scold the sinners. You deacon, don't scold the sinners when they come to our church. We come to our church because we are sinners. We want you to help us to get out from sin. Then you hit us. Hi, I know you are sin. Yeah, I'm sin. That's why I'm here. Give me Jesus. Are you hearing me? Give me Jesus. That's what. Give me Jesus. That's what the preacher must bring good news. That's the Bible says. Gospel means good news. But to scold the people is not good news. Rebuking people is not good news. Tell them the love of God. Amen. Tell them that Jesus loved them. Amen. Read your scripture. The Bible tells us sin to Jesus is a, is a sick. When you are a sinner, you are a sick man. You are a sick woman. How do we find out the scripture? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, all those who are not sick, they don't look for this physician. Only sick people. Look for the doctor. Then he explains that. Read that verse. That shows you that sin is a sick. It's a sick. Jesus says, I've come to heal, to save the sinners. The scripture says so. That those who are not sick, they don't look physician. Only sick people. So he said, I've come. Because people are sick in sin. So, say to the elders and those deacons, when you are safe, people must be so excited to go to church because they will hear good news. Not blaming people, not scolding people. People will hear good news. 
that Jesus loves you. Jesus knows that you are a sinner. Just keep on coming to church, keep on reading the word, you find there are some kind of sin who go one by one. There are some sins that go one down, but there are some sins that there are some sins that I didn't think I don't think is gonna go away from me. You are worshiping, but it's still there. You worship, but they're still there. You worship, but as you continue, you find that ah, it's gone. Huh? It's gone. Ah, it's gone. <laughs> No, I used to have a, a short temper. Get angry, me. I used to get angry quickly. When I get angry, my face change. I used to have a face change, change all the time. When you say talk bad about me, you say, no, I don't care. Um, <coughs> if I cannot swallow because of them, <laughs> because of ang- angry. <laughs> but I suffered with that. I showed tempers, angry. But, but because I was younger in the Lord, I spent one year to fight that tem- short temper. I read the book of, uh, uh, book of, book of Psalm. We talk the creating me, oh God, clean heart. I spent one year. Oh God, create clean heart. So what happened? One day, I had my, so that short timber, I had my book, uh, I'm a carpenter. I had a shop in Harare, and a lot of my workers, my carpenters working, and another man walk, he walked there. Then I said, ah, can't you say excuse to the other people? Say, can't you say excuse? said, what? He was ready to fight with me. I said, what? <laughs> then, I thought my anger is going to come up. Then I, I tried to, I felt like someone who'd been fast for a long time. <laughs> I, want to, I want to be getting angry. <laughs> it's just gone. <laughs> Short temper has gone. <laughs> and I went to nearly go to thank God it's gone. <laughs> no more. No more. No more. It's gone. But I spent a year, because I was young in the Lord, fighting with that things, get out from. That's why today you can say, Ezekiel, you are a dog, you are a dog. You can say anything. If I don't, if see no tell here, <laughs> don't worry. I just eat, enjoy. But you, if someone say you are a dog, oh, oh. <laughs> but God has changed me. But it's taken one year to fight with that short temper spirit. So I know the kind of sins that go one by one. You see? I know the sins that takes time. Some of those things, it helps you to keep on fasting. Because if you don't have a sin troubles you, you don't fast. But when things trouble you fast, you are afraid to go back to the city. So you keep, so God allowed that thing to be near you. So you say, uh-uh. <laughs> If I don't work hard, <laughs> I find myself in the world. <laughs> so you, it's there. God knows that uh, you have problems, that, but don't you worry. He knows, but it's helped you to run away, run away, run away to go to God. It is when you end, continue entering and growing in the kingdom of God, you will enjoy, say, ah, that trap, hating people. Get angry. Okay. We teach people in my church, new believers. I think I wrote, when you come to church, I tell new believers, in the church, there's a gossip in the church. Every church, there's a gossip in the church. But what a new believer, he, when he joins church, he thinks you're all like angels. But after a few weeks, then here, there are some so if you don't tell new believers that in the church there is a gossiping in the church, they backslid them. Because ah, I thought it so, uh, Pastor Tagadira, I thought it was an like angel. I hear him doing this. So you find, but it's better to tell new believers in the church there is a gossip. People gossip in the church. When you know that, <laughs> yeah, you are not going to listen you. Wasting your time. So, okay, if I gossip you, 
whose bed you and me, who, whose bed, the, the bed one is the one who received the gospel. The bad one who received the gospel. Yes. Because if I gospel to you, say, brother, brother, God, I saw so, 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 and you keep quiet. No problem. But you receive it and you tell people. <laughs> so the one who receives the gospel is a sinner. So don't receive gospel. Just don't receive gospel. Because you will, uh, oh, um, I see a lot of things, but um, um, I see a lot of things in the people. I see a lot of things in the people, but I don't have time to say. But I'm saying to you, in the church they are gossiping. Don't join gossip. Don't join gossip. <laughs> Separate yourself. Find someone who loves God like you. Find someone who's encouraged you to seek God. Not that one who talk about bad people in the church, bad people in the church, and some, oh, I see some, you are leaning to that brother, but you, can, you see that brother is good. He's, he's in our forward in faith, but the other leg is in another church. If you follow him, you go with, you get lost. I saw this, my spirit. Yes, yes. Yes, he's, he's, he's in forward in faith, but he's get some oil to another church. He gets another oil. He gets some waters from another church. And you join him. Then you find you go where he's going. As it in, 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 in the book. So to be a deacon here, you must know these things. Know that there's a gospel. Any church, there's a gospel in the church. Don't be a gospel. Don't be the listener of gospel. Don't be a listener of people gossiping. Because you cannot grow. You cannot hear bad things and, and in the church and grow. You can't. So I have refused myself. Since I've been pastor in church, I said if there's a gospel, I want me to be the last one to hear. I don't want to hear any gospel. Tell, let, tell us what I want, I don't want. Don't tell me about people who don't like me. Oh, that's how you need to know this. I've been saying all my, don't tell me that people don't, don't like you. So I saw Mr. So talk about it. Don't tell me. I know that people, some people don't, don't like me. Don't tell me. Tell me that every, uh, tell me good things only. Just if you want your pastor to pray for you, don't tell them bad news. If you want your pastor to pray for you, don't talk bad about the church. Don't talk about pastor. Don't talk about something because it does encourage you. It is very, very important to plan to speak good words. So that we can say this morning, we have a lot of things. No, because I see a lot of baby uh, deacons. So I thank God for the teaching you have received. They were all the speakers were just giving you, but they never, very few of those, they were giving you planning, all this uh, organization and uh, financial. Very good. To, uh, for once you become a deacon, you must know how to handle your own finance. And if you have borrowed money, now start paying everything. You need to be free men. You don't need people looking for you for you to pay them. Don't stick, borrow money anymore. So I see a lot of things here, you, but mainly all things, important things to make sure that you're born again. Important thing that you fear God. You don't play with the sin. You fight with sin. You don't like sin. No, here I am. Oh, you are not here with any uh, medicine. Any medicine. Go to the doctor. There are some, you call Christian? How do? Huh? I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> but they give you, in that thing, there's a law that for this medicine, there are some don'ts. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. 
So that is the medicine. Don't do this. If you, if you do this, you can damage yourself. That's the drugs they give you. Say, don't do this. Exactly with my blessing. God says, don't do this. They'll just say, if you don't do this, I will bless you. If you don't do this, if you don't do this, I give you a lot of money. Ah, I like that. So, <laughs> so that's why I have to, I know. If I do bad things, you too, you will suffer. That's why you pray for me. So that the blessing is flowing to you. The blessing is flowing to you. Flowing to you. Flowing to you. Flowing to you. So, the deacons is to work with under, to work together with the elders. But that's the only the ranks, but the spiritual, you can be more stronger than your elder. You can be more stronger than, but this is just, that's any company. Says so this one, the soldier, there's this, this ranks on it, so that we don't crush, that's all. But it doesn't mean that to be a deacon, you are down there, inside. It's, it's no, it's, it's just ranks, so how can, so we cannot uh, crush together. But you can be Stronger than your elder. You can be stronger than your past inside of you. So uh, this must be clear to you. Because something you think that to be a deacon is your... When you say work under the, the elder, you think it is in the spirit you are under. No. It's just <laughs> your spirit is different. So your spirit is different. So it's very, very important to know this. Because I see... Uh, I see some people here. Oh, yes, uh, you're going to be delivered, but the, the teaching we've been hearing is helping us to able to fight with. Okay, do you hear Baba Guti what he said? What is the biggest thing in the world? What is the biggest thing in the world? It's only two things. The biggest thing in the world. It's the money and the sex. That's the biggest thing in the world. <laughs> money and the sex. People are dying because of sex. People are dying because of money. Those two things. Do you want to know what the biggest thing in the world? No. This new word, sex, X like this. It's a new word. It was not like that. <laughs> is that when you see X like that, what it means? Means sex, means intercourse, some. <laughs> but today they just put mm, mm. Then you know. <laughs> no more food words. It, is, it used to be full words, but no, just X means sleeping with somebody. So, so that's the biggest thing in the world. If God can save you from those two things, you are a wonderful man of God, woman of God. So, today, we are here to explain how to be a good deacon and get blessing. We have read it in verse 13. There, before we close, for those who have served well as a deacon obtained for themselves good outstanding and great boldness in the faith in Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, we are spending all this time to help our new deacons. We were supposed to do that the first day but uh, I was so busy with other things. So today, then we, although maybe we're going to spend more time by uh, Saturday by the grace of God, you need to have the, this book of African Apostle. So we talk about the history. How do you explain about your history? We're going to say it tomorrow, 
or not on Sunday or, or Saturday, but we need to, I have to read it, this. How do you extend? We said there was a, a, a man, a woman in Mashingo, and it happened uh, at Shitungwiza. Uh, uh, a man uh, pregnant a woman, and this woman get birth, get baby. And the baby, the, the mother, the, the father who pregnant this, he went away. And uh, when the baby grew up, he said, Mama, where is my father? He said, for what? Your father never helped me. So I need to know my father. It's happened everywhere. I need my father. Where is my father? I want where is my father. Why? Because if you don't know, you are just like a colored. You know, no root. <laughs> you have no root. You, if you don't know where you're from, you are nothing. You are, you are not exist. <laughs> you, 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 do know, you do know this. <laughs> if you don't know where you come from. So that's why this woman, this girl, going around. As seen I've been in America. They're going around. Seeking my father. Where is my father? <laughs> my mother, mother get angry. Your father didn't give you anything. And why are you looking for him? I want to know my father. So, so to know where you're from is very, very important. Now, I want to show you spiritual. How you going to say it when they ask you. The only place in short is to read the book of uh, Book of Acts chapter 7. Book of Acts chapter 7, verse 2. Book of Acts 7, verse 2. At the beginning of verse 1 says, Then the high priest said, Are these things so? And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. The God of glory appeared to Abraham, our father. So simple to you. The glory of God appeared to our father in Gaoni. That's what you said. The God of glory. You hear me that, oh my God, I didn't get it from the church. You heard I met God before I met the church. So that is the verse you use all the time. Where are you from? Why you worship this God? What happened? Say, Our Father, the, glory, the God of glory, appeared to Ezekiel when he was young. That's where you finish. That's your, the history. You have to have a history. Where are you from? Who's, who's that church? What happened? So, this man here, uh, Stephen, he explained the history of his church. And when he was speaking, he felt changed, changed like an angel. He was unexplained why. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was still in Mesopotamia before he stayed in Haran. So it happened to Ezekiel Guti when he was there in Ngaoni before he stayed in Harare. That's it. That's, that's just so, so simple. You are not walking in the darkness, brother. You are not following uh, just thing you should don't know. So you must know where you're from, what happened. Just very simple. The God of glory appeared my father when he was there in Ngaoni before he came sitting in Harare. So that, that he said, Stephen, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. Well, he was still in the Sopotamia before he came to stay in Haran. 
So, are you got anything now? I want you to stand up now. Shall we all stand? The God of glory appeared. The God of glory appeared. The God of glory appeared. So, that is this morning. We're speaking to the new deacons. So, we want you to grow spiritual. The tissue which you have received from Tuesday is good for you to have a knowledge, to understand about life. But I'm speaking the root. Where are you from? And why you play, what God has spoken to you to do? God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.